All right, peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and today I'm going to discuss about obeying the most highest law, statutes, and commandments. I hope y'all doing good in these tough times and staying strong. So I want to discuss about being rewarded for obeying God's word, God's law, and obeying the most high personally for your life. So we're going to turn to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. Blessings for obedience. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall, be, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds, and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. As to he sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. And all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity, in the fruit of your womb, and in the fruit of your livestock, and in the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall only go up and not down. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. So, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 1 through 14, it basically displays how when we obey God's word, we obey his law, statutes, and commandments. And not just the 10 common commandments, but the 614 law, statutes, and commandments. When we obey the most high, how much he will look out for us, how much he will bless us inside out, how he will bless us physically, emotionally, you know, materialistic wise, mentally, inside out, he'll bless us in all areas of our lives and we won't be lacking much. Now, of course, the Commandments that we're common to are do not steal, do not murder, you know, the Ten Commandments that's usually spread across. But there's so much lost that just the commandments all throughout the Old Testament, all throughout the first five books of Moses. And even in the New Testament, Jesus always discussed other commandments as well as the greatest commandment, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind and soul, you know, and loving your brother and things of that nature. But overall, our personal relationship with the most high is everything and us being in the flesh and having our sinful desires and making our mistakes and errors at the end of the day we have to always humble ourselves and always come back to his word and always worship him in truth and spirit and we also have to always keep his commandments in mind because jesus said if you don't do the commandments then you don't love the father so the commandments is very important people it's very important to obey the most high the problem with our former forefathers is that they didn't obey the Most High. That's why we're all scattered here to this day. And we're trying to, we have to restore everything that's been lost and broken to us because our forefathers, our ancestors, they strayed away from God. They strayed away from the Most High. They strayed away from His commandments. They were stiff necked people. And now we have to do the restoring. We have to be rebuilt. We have to be renewed. So we have to come back to the Most High and His Word. And the way he wants us to live for him. And it's just a beautiful thing to be blessed by the most high inside out. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1 it says. And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God. Being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today. That the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. So the most high will exalt you. Not in an arrogant or a haughty way. But in his way. For his glory. For his sake. And you got to lead by example. So the Most High is going to set us above. 
He gave us power and dominion over all this anyway. So we shouldn't be beneath. We shouldn't be struggling. We shouldn't be just barely getting by. We should be dominating. We should be ruling. We should be in our royalty. And the Most High is going to exalt us when we do His will. We do His work. We are in our purpose for Him. We're in His word and we're living by it. And not just talking it, we're living it. And verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. So, them blessings are just going to run over. You know how Psalm 23 it talks about my cup runs over. When, it over when the blessings overtake you and run over, it's just nonstop. It's countless, you know. It just keeps going and going. It's unlimited. You know, God is an abundant giver. You know, he gives us way more than we can imagine. So, you know, when he blesses us. We can't even track it sometimes. It just pops up. It's so unexpected and it's beautiful. And in verse 3 it says, Blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. So even you go to any part of the world, any random city, any field, you'll still be blessed. And people will see the blessing on you. They'll feel that anointing. They'll feel the presence of God on you. They'll see that light. They'll just see your countenance. They'll see God's glory just all over you. Then it said, Blessed shall you be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of the ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. So obviously back in those ancient times, you know, most of the most highest people were farmers. Uh, they were in the garden, you know, things like that. But you fast forward to today, the word still stands even forever more on. You know, the most highest words never go void and it always stays with us. So even if we plant or have our garden, you know, he'll still bless it. You know, he still bless our food. That we make on our own, even when we go shopping or whatnot, when we eat healthy and we do the right things, the most high blessed. In verse five, it says, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. So you go out anywhere, you'll be blessed, man. You go out to the library, you go to school, you go to work. The blessings are all over you. You know what I mean? Wherever God places you. Whether in your career, you're just blessed inside out, wherever you go. And blessings just stay on you. And verse 7 says, The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before you. They shall come against you one way and flee before you seven ways. So, in this, in this walking journey with God, you will have enemies, you will have haters, you will have people going against you. Going against your faith, going against your beliefs and whatnot, try to disrespect you, try to mock you, persecute you. But the Most High will drive those enemies away from you. The Most High will get rid of them for you. Remember, vengeance is the Most High, it's not ours. So the Lord will, will drive them away from us. They'll come at us one way, they'll flee seven different ways. The Most High will always get them back. Nobody goes untouched out here. You get what I'm saying? And our enemies are very goofy and haughty and arrogant, think they got it all figured out, but... We serve a great high God, and trust me, God is strong on karma and getting people back and justice. So, he'll even take care of our enemies. Then it says, the Lord will command a blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake, and he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God has given you. So, many of us live in different parts of the world. Different. Some people live in America, some in Mexico, some in Europe or Africa or Asia. Wherever you are, God will bless you right where you're at. Even with the corrupt government or even with crazy laws that your area you're in, God will still bless you personally. And he will still bless those around you. You know, it's a beautiful thing. He'll bless you right in that land that you're in. And then it also says that, verse 9, The Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself, as he sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So we have to live by the law, statutes, and commandments that the Most High has given us. These law, statutes, and commandments aren't even that strict or, or, or even that hard to do. It's very simple, very easy. You know, it's very simple. You know, it's not rocket science. It's not way harder. It's not so complex. The Most High, He works with us on a simple level. We just have to be obedient and not be hard headed and not stiff necked. And also, on verse 10 it says and all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you so see people even see that we have God with us and when it when they're not going to be afraid in a scary way it's going to be a respect factor they're going to respect 
how blessed we are. They're going to respect our relationship with God. They're going to respect how much God does for us and how we move in God's presence. They're going to respect it and fear it. And also verse 11, it says, And the Lord will make you abound in prosperity and the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your livestock and the fruit of your ground within the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasury, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. And you shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. So we're going to be the head and not the tail. We're the, we're, you know, we're the movers and shakers. You know what I mean? People have to come to us. We shouldn't have to come to people. We should have to borrow a bag. We should have all the resources. We should have all the all the wealth, all the possessions, all the things that can help people live lives better. We're supposed to be in our rulership and our royalty, but we obey the most high. We have to come back to him and repent and change our ways. You know, and also verse 13, and the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you shall go only go up and not down if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, being careful to do them. So the Most High is going to keep exalting us. He's going to keep promoting us. He's going to make us keep rising to the top. You know what I mean? And that's how we're supposed to live our lives. We're supposed to live our lives on top. We're not supposed to always be struggling or barely getting by or barely just getting through. We're supposed to dominate and thrive and prosper and flourish with no problem. And not just in a materialistic sense, but just in our everyday lives, you know, be more stable, be more solid, you know. And just go through our days the way we're supposed to. In verse 14 it says. And if you do not turn aside. From any of the words that I command to you today. To the right or to the left. To go after other gods to serve them. So we know that God is a jealous God. And we should not idolize any other gods. We should not put anything before the most high. We shouldn't turn to the left. And we shouldn't turn to the right. We got to stay on that narrow path the whole way for God. And keep it that way for the rest of our lives. So we have to stay stationary. We have to stay stable. We have to stay solid for God. Yes, he's going he's gonna to move us and shift us. And we do have to get our comfort zones for him and his presence. But overall, when it comes to getting blessings and on this path, we have to stay on that narrow path. We cannot stray to the left. We can't stray to the right. There's no U-turns. We can't go back to our old ways. We can't go back to the past. We have to keep propelling. We have to keep moving forward and only go up from there. This is how we truly get blessed by God. It's not just about our wants and desires and selfish ambitions. It's about us submitting to him, us obeying his word, us living for him, us bringing people to him. That's what it's about. At the end of the day, it's all for him and his glory. It's all for the kingdom of heaven. It has nothing to do with us a lot of times. A lot of our times, we have to put ourselves out the equation. Sometimes we have to get out of our own way. You know what I mean? Sometimes we trip ourselves up. But we want to do things our way. We can't get God's blessings doing things our way. We have to do it his way. His word, his laws, his statutes, his commandments. The way he wants us to get it done. Needs us to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Because people always look at blessings as just a car or a house. Which are nice things. But blessings go beyond that. Blessings go beyond a car. It goes beyond a house. You know what I mean? It goes beyond a job or a promotion or a career. It goes beyond that. You know, it's long run stuff that can't be taken away from you. You know what I mean? Long stuff, long term blessings that no man can even affect with. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is in this walk with God, man. So that was today's message for today. It's about blessings for obedience. You know, we got to obey the most high, man. We'll get blessed fully inside out, man. We really need it in these tough times. We need these miracles. We need these open doors. We need these promotions. We need to be exalted. We need to really stretch and live lives fully, abundantly for him. So, God bless y'all. I love y'all a lot. Much love to y'all. Peace.